Hello. Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Uh, my name is Anthony Ritz, and uh, I will be the instructor for this here linear Diophantine equation presentation. Uh, it is nice to see all of you. It looks like we've got about 18 watching. Hopefully more will be jumping in shortly. Uh, how's it going? Uh, yeah, um, we are live now, I think. Uh, Manas, can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you guys uh, see in here? I take it that's a yes. People are saying good, great. Uh, all right, glad to hear it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear about your lag, Manas. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for responding. And uh, awesome, wonderful. So, uh, today I'm here to talk to you about a very, very special type of equation very near and dear to my heart, uh, and uh, something that will pop up at the higher levels of the GMAT, uh, and these are Diophantine equations, specifically linear Diophantine equations, if you want to be very precise. Um, but before I get into it, I just want to say that I am really happy to be here on the GMAT Club YouTube channel, and uh, I would love for you guys to uh, subscribe. Uh, to the channel because there are a lot of great videos and things like that that get posted here and you'll get notifications about all the new videos on uh, MBA and GMAT stuff that go up on this channel if you subscribe to it. Um, it also helps us out a lot which helps us continue to bring you this great free content. Um, and in fact, I'm, I'm reading my phone because there was a special offer I wanted to let you know about and uh, actually, the GMAT Club people are posting that offer right now, which is that if you subscribe, you'll get a seven-day subscription to GMAT Club instant activation. Link in comments. So that's pretty awesome. Also, if you like this video, please hit like. If you hate this video, please click dislike. We really want to know what you think, and uh, your likes and dislikes are very helpful. So please like or dislike. I hope you like, but you know, uh, share your feelings with the, uh, the little thumbs up, thumbs down buttons and we will really appreciate that. Okay, uh, as for me, uh, my name, as I said, is Anthony Ritz, and I am a longtime, full-time private tutor for uh, Veritas Prep. Uh, I've been doing this in one form or another for almost 20 years now. Um, I have a 790 GMAT score, including 51s on both quant and verbal, and I've helped students get into pretty much any top school you can possibly think of. So, uh, <laughs> hi, Manas, you got it to work? Is it working now? See me and hear me? Great, awesome, wonderful. Manas sees and hears us as well. So anyway, um, I like to think I know a little bit of what I'm talking about with this stuff, but obviously you'll be able to judge yourself. Um, if the last time I did this is any indication, I will probably make some stupid typo error at some point in this slide deck. Oh, thanks for asking, Manus. I'm doing great. I'm up here having a great conversation with a bunch of cool people about a topic I really like. So it's a good day for me. Um, anyway. Uh, by the way, if you do like this video, a couple weeks ago I did another one on number theory, and I encourage you to go back and uh, find it on the, uh, the GMAT Club YouTube channel, and go like that one too, you know, watch it and see what you think. Uh, the session should go about an hour, we'll see. Um, I, I have too many questions in the slides, I have eight, there's no way I'm doing eight in an hour, so uh, there'll probably be a few we skip to kind of keep it close to an hour, maybe just a hair longer, Subash. Okay, so when I walked in there was this question on the board, Julie's Lemonade Stand, and uh, hopefully you've already started taking a look at it. This is a time when I thought I would just kind of throw you in with a question. I'm not going to give you any real guidance about uh, what this is all about or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of throw you in and uh, see what you do. Now, we're going to be using links for Poll Everywhere, where you can put in your answers in a poll. Uh, so hopefully we have that link somewhere. I think I, I sent it to GMAT Club a couple minutes ago, and I guess maybe they'll post it up. Uh, I'm not sure. I could also type it into the chat myself, although I will have to step off camera for just one moment to do so. Uh, let me see. I don't see GMAT Club posting that up. Let me... Ah, great. Wonderful. Awesome. Poll link. So if you'd like to now go to that poll and fill in your answer for this question, I'm going to give you like, uh, I don't know, 
90 seconds. 90 seconds. It's already been on the board for a couple minutes. That should be plenty of time. So I'm going to step off for 90 seconds. Please don't shout out anything in the chat, okay? Don't, don't spoil it for people. Just go to that poll link, pick your answer there. We'll discuss it in 90 seconds. All right, let's see what we've got. I'm gonna turn the next page and we're gonna have us a little poll review here. Wait, activity not found. Uh, damn it. Really? Huh. That's not good. Hmm. I can see the poll on my phone. Sorry guys, I'm still new with this pulley V thing and it is just killing me. Um, one second. Multiple choice pull. I have the app. Let me just double check this. Am I not signed in? Is that the problem? One second. Maybe I'm not signed in and that's the problem. I may now close this window. Did that do it? Okay. Um, ah, there we go. I just wasn't signed in. Okay. Haha, -ha, problem solved. I, I thought I was signed in on this computer. Apparently, I was not, but now I am. So, here are your results. And, ooh, they're still updating live. I can see that 36% of you thought it was C, 33% B, couple people for D, couple people for E, and uh, let's talk about it, shall we? So now, this question appears to be a system of equations. I see the answer still bouncing around there. Here's to be a system of equations, you know, two, uh, two variables here, because I've got the 52 cent and 58 cent lemonades, and I could certainly represent those with variables. I could call the 52 cent lemonades X, the 58 cent lemonades Y, and if I did, then when I said Julie sold a total of nine lemonades, I could write X plus Y equals nine. And when I said that the total value was 492, I could write 52X plus 58Y equals 492. I've cho chosen to do this all in cents in order to avoid decimals. Now, let's talk about this. Do you all agree? I know that a couple people pick D, but that if I simply tell you Julie sold nine lemonades, Julie sold nine lemonades, how many were small lemonades? I have no idea, right? I, I'm thinking of a number between zero and nine, a number of small lemonades. What was my number? I don't know. 
Do you see why statement one is not sufficient? Is that clear to everyone? Is that clear to anyone? You can talk in the, in the chat now. Let me know. Big fan of participation over here. Yeah? Especially those of you who picked D. OK. But now, when I put them together, what I have is a system of equations. I've got two equations and two variables. x plus y equals 9, and 52x plus 58y equals 492. And I hope that we all know that that sort of a system is generally solvable, and I, I can solve this one. You could imagine multiplying the first equation by 58. 58x plus 58y equals, I don't know, whatever the hell 9 times 58 is. I'm not going to do that. But then I subtract, and the y's would cancel. And I'd be left with 58x minus 52x. I'd be left with 6x equals some number. I divide by 6, I get the answer. Do you all agree that I can do this with the two statements together? Do you agree I can do it with the two of them? But then here's the thing. If that's the end of the story, and the answer is C, did I really need to be up here doing a high-level GMAT presentation on this question? Like, if, if it's C, was this interesting? Was it hard? Would it be a 700-level question on your test? If the answer was C? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I hope you don't look at this and go, wow, boy, solving system really hard, okay? I mean, if you are at that point, that's fine, and, and we'll work with you. Uh, but this might not be the right lesson for you because we're aiming a little bit high level here. And uh, I assume that most of the people in this in this group know that they can solve this system. But think about what that means. A is certainly out, D is out, E is out because I can solve it, but C makes me feel kind of dumb, like maybe I'm a sucker. So what else could it be? Well, can that be all there is to it? No, I don't think so. Let's take a closer look at statement two. If there's a catch anywhere, that catch is statement two. How could statement two be sufficient on its own? Well, what if statement two, somehow, the fact that Julie made $4.92 told me, in and of itself, that Julie sold nine lemonades? If that's the case, if the fact of statement two alone gave me the nine lemonades, then statement two would give me everything and would be sufficient standing alone, right? Yeah, it is a C trap. Do you see where I'm going with this? If statement two gives me both pieces of information, then it's sufficient by itself. Let's find out, OK? Let me ask you this question. What is the l largest amount of money Julie could possibly have made Selling $4.92 worth of lemonades. Sorry, no, excuse me. Selling eight lemonades or fewer. I, pfft, sorry. Let me try that again. If Julie sold eight or fewer lemonades, what is the most money she could have made? That's what I'm trying to ask. If Julie sold eight or fewer lemonades, what is the most money she possibly could have made? Yeah, very good. 8 times 58 is the most she ever could have made, and 8 times 58 is $4.64. So, could she have made $4.92 by selling 8 or fewer lemonades? No. She could not have possibly done this with 8 or fewer lemonades. She could not have made enough money. What is the least amount of money Julie could possibly have made by selling 10 or more lemonades? What is the least she could have made selling 10 or more lemonades? Right. 
10 times 52, 520. So, <laughs> here's the fun part. Using statement two, and only using statement two, if Julie sold $4.92 worth of lemonades, how many lemonades did Julie sell? I don't want the actual solution, Antimony. If you're actually solving this system, you're missing the point. Based on statement one, she could not have made this amount of money selling eight or fewer lemonades, right? Based on statement two, she could not have made this amount of money selling 10 or more lemonades. So if she made this amount of money, based on statement two alone, didn't she have to sell nine lemonades? That's right, Kana. Do you all see that? That based on statement two alone, I get the nine lemonades? Understand why that is? Some people are throwing that equation in there. That's fine. But I want to get the conceptual aspect of here more than I want us to solve that system algebraically. But here's the thing. If it had to be nine lemonades based on only statement two, then what did I need statement one for at all? Statement one is redundant. It tells me something I got from statement two. And that means that statement two alone is sufficient. The correct answer was B. Right. More than eight, less than ten, had to be nine. Because Julie, and this is the important part, sold an integer number of lemonades. Yeah, we found the max and min and we got a range, and that range is nine. The range is just nine and nothing else, right? And that's enough to prove that it had to be this. But this is crazy. This is insane. You're telling me that one equation and two variables is solvable? I thought that wasn't supposed to be the case. I thought I was supposed to have as many equations as I had variables, like I need two equations to solve for two variables. Now you're telling me, haha, just kidding, it's actually one? Yeah, what? Uh, it turns out, turns out there is a narrow exception to the normal rule of systems of equations. The normal rule says you need as many equations as you have variables. The exception says not so fast. If I restrict my equations, yes. Well, no, no, we don't actually. Hang on. Let me, let me finish what I'm saying and then I'll answer antimony. If I restrict my equations, to integer values or positive integer values, it turns out that with positive integer values, I may be able to solve for more variables than I have equations. That is called a Diophantine equation. It's named after an ancient Greek dude named Diophantus. I'm not the one who named it. Sorry, it's a horrible word. But D-I-O-P-H-A-N-T-I-N-E equations are integer valued equations and systems. And their fun property is they may solve for more variables than you have equations. Today I'm going to show you how to do that, when you can do that, and a whole bunch of fun things about working with these equations. Now, antimony said in order to be sure that it's 9, we need to verify that 492 can be achieved from integral values of x and y. And I say, no, we don't. We don't need to verify that. Why? Because they told us it can be done because they said in the second statement that Julie made $4.92. And remember that the statements on the GMAT are premises, and premises are infallible. So if they told you Julie did this, it must have been possible. The question is never, was it possible at all? When data sufficiency comes around, the question is, was it possible one way or multiple ways? If it was possible only one way, it's sufficient. If it was possible multiple ways, insufficient. But I'm not worried about the zero possibility case because again, they told me she did. So I don't even need to check that. I assume that there's a solution. Okay, so this was our inspiration and this is our equation. Ax plus By equals C. Yes, I am absolutely going to do that, Shashank. Uh, Shashank. Uh, please forgive me if I butcher anyone's pronunciations. I am doing my best up here, but I'm not great at it. So this is our equation. Ax plus by equals c is the standard form 
of a linear Diophantine equation with a, b, c, x, and y restricted to integer, integer values. All right? Now, if you get one of those, you're generally going to want to reduce it. If you reduce it, that means you've divided it out so that a, b, and c share no common factor greater than 1. Okay? And as I've already said, it may be possible in certain cases to solve for mo more than one variable, both x and y, with just this one statement. So I just showed you a question of that. Now let me give you another example, and this one we're going to talk about together. We're going to do this one as a conversation. At Ivan's Petting Zoo, visitors can pay to ride yaks and zebras. A yak ride costs $91, whereas a zebra ride costs $28. How many ways can you spend exactly $703 on yak and or zebra rides at the petting zoo? Now, can anyone tell me what the equation, the linear Diophantine equation in standard form, would look like for this problem? Just shout it in the chat. No poll for this one at the moment. Actually, I should clear the previous poll. Yes, very good. 21, uh, sorry, 91, excuse me, x plus 28y equals 703. If you take, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my variable slightly to represent what it is. Since I've got yaks and zebras, I'm gonna write it like this. Oops, not this, I'm skipping the poll on this one. Sorry, like this. 91y plus 28z equals 703. Lack tutor, does that make sense? And everyone else? Everyone follow this equation? Yes? Great. So then the question is, can I solve this? It is a linear Diophantine equation. How many solutions? The question is, how many ways? So it's not actually asking what's the solution, it's asking how many. Is it reduced, is a question I might ask. I might go looking for common factors. Do I have any common factors on the left? Just between these two things, any common factors? Ah, actually I do, I do. It's cleverly hidden, but 91 is 7 times 13, and 28 is also a multiple of 7. Is 7 also a factor on the right-hand side? Is 7 also a factor of 703? Oh, it's not, right? Because 700 is a multiple of 7, 707 is a multiple of 7, 703 is not a multiple of 7. But actually, here's the trick. That means the left-hand side is a multiple of 7. But the right-hand side is not a multiple of 7. How many values of y and z make that possible? For how many values of y and z does a multiple of 7 equal not a multiple of 7? None. <laughs> That's right. None. Zip. Zilch. Zebra. Zero. I mean, zero. <laughs> right? There are no solutions to this equation. And there's a fun, fun principle of these. If you ever get a factor of both A and B and it's not a factor of C, automatically no solution. Can't be done. All right? So uh, there's no way to spend exactly $703 on yak and or zebra rides at Ivan's Petting Zoo. Make sense? Got it? The, okay. The left-hand side here, this is a multiple of 7, right? 
the right hand side here, not a multiple of seven. Right, Kanha? Kanha? And uh, Vishvindra? Do you guys agree that the left side is a multiple of seven, but the right side is not? Kana? Yeah, I don't want to do the math here, Shashank. The whole point of this lesson is that, yeah, I don't want to do the math. <laughs> I'm not super interested in grinding this out. There are lots of grindy ways, and they suck. I want to do better. I want these all right in 30 seconds or less. And as crazy as that sounds, I do every Diophantine equation I see correctly in 30 seconds or less. All right, it can be done. So, from here. How can these two things be equal? This is a multiple of seven. That's not a multiple of seven. What values of y and z make a multiple of seven equal not a multiple of seven? It can't be done. There are no solutions. Kana and Vishvendra, Vishvendra, do you see why there are no solutions? Black tutor, hang around. I'm gonna get to your question, but that's a different problem. Kanha, Vishvendra, do you get it? Got it. Okay. Moving forward. As we just learned, if in the reduced form A and B have any common factor greater than 1, once it's reduced, if they still have a factor in common and it's not just 1, then there is no solution. Why? Because that means the left-hand side's a multiple of that thing and the right side's not, and uh, mm -mm, not going to work. Otherwise, Otherwise, if A and B have no common factors, and it's reduced, and they have no common factors greater than 1, I can guarantee you a solution, provided that this C value is greater than the A times B value. In fact, uh, we can later tell you exactly how many solutions there will be. Okay? Uh, now, interestingly, going back to the first problem we had, 26x plus 29y equals 492, that one could be reduced. It could be reduced by a factor of 2. I'm sorry, 58. Nah, I'm thinking ahead. 52x plus 58y equals 492. When you reduce it, you get 26 and 28, or 29. Um, but these guys, if you take a 2 out, 26x plus 29y equals 246. This is reduced, but these guys are much larger than this, right? The product of A and B is greater than C. 26 times 29 is much more than 246. What that means is that my first question with Julie's lemonade stand, I couldn't have guaranteed a solution just by looking at the equation. Again, I guarantee a solution because they told me she did it. But interestingly, whenever A and B are greater than C as a product, there's at most one solution. So as soon as I recognized that, I could have said, well, Julie's lemonade stand is sufficient with statement two. As soon as I recognized that the product of these is greater than that, there was at most one solution. But there wasn't no solution because they said she did it. So there was exactly one solution. So it was B. If you know this rule, you can be incredibly fast. You look at it, you go, hey, wait, this product is greater than that thing. Only one solution at most. Let's do another problem, and this time I want you all to try it. This one is hard, though, so be careful. Uh, I'm going to walk off for two minutes, and I'm, I've cleared the poll EV poll, so go back to that same link and uh, pull it up again. Okay? Great. Good luck.
We just hit the two minute mark. Now would be a very good time to submit an answer in the poll if you've got it. I have like four of you answering in the poll and I've got like 40 of you watching. So not like a math person or anything, but that looks like about 10%. Yeah. Come on, come on. Give me your best shot. Bring it, answer in the poll. Just watching the results come in on my phone here. Um, okay, well, I'm going to close it up now. You've had plenty of time, and uh, there's the results. Uh, why does that show up? Okay, there's the results. 43% uh, of you picked B, 14% C, 14% D, 29% E. Nobody picked A, except apparently Ravi, who doesn't like to use polls and just would rather answer in the chat. Okay, well, uh, let's see if we can write an equation for this. Apples 26 cents each, bananas 24, cantaloupes 65, spends five bucks. Well, if I were to write that equation, suppose it would look like this. 26A, 24B, 65C equals 500. Uh-oh, linear diophantic equation with three terms. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. We haven't even talked about that, right? We have, we have no idea. Uh, I guess we should look at statement one, right? Because as of right now, I just don't know. I just don't know. But, okay, statement one, Clark does not like bananas. Well, we can go ahead and cross bananas out. If he's going to buy fruit that he likes, or if he's going to like the fruit that he buys, he better not have bought bananas. Because if he bought bananas, I guarantee he didn't like all the fruit that he buys, right? So now, if I just kind of cross off the bananas and say, okay, well, I'm really just looking to solve this equation. Can he do it? Can this equation be solved? 26a plus 65c equals 500. No, he cannot. Do you know why he can't? Tell me why. Tell me why. One thing you're going to learn about one thing you're going to learn about me real quick, guys, I'm like the perfect two-year-old. My favorite question is why? Why, 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 why? Exactly. Because that's a multiple of 13. That's a multiple of 13. That is not a multiple of 13. There's no solution to this equation. Because the left side is surely a multiple of 13. And the right side is not. Clark cannot buy his fruit with only apples and cantaloupes and spend five dollars. If he did in fact spend exactly five dollars, as the problem tells me, he must have bought some bananas, which he doesn't like. So, does Clark like all of the fruit that he buys? No. Clark does not like all the fruit that he buys. He had to buy bananas. But that is sufficient. Do you agree that this statement is 100% sufficient to answer the question? I literally just did. The answer is no. Agreed? Statement one, sufficient. Statement one is entirely sufficient, and that's why. Same principle as the last question. Now look at statement two. Now he doesn't like cantaloupes. He can only like all the fruit that he buys if c equals zero. In other words, it's only possible if we can solve this equation. Now, can we solve this equation? Well, if I reduce it, 13a plus 12b equals 250, and 13 and 12 have no common factors greater than one. In other words, I know my equation will have a solution as long as 13 times 12 is less than 250. But 13 times 12 is way less than 250, right? I mean, 13 times 13 is 169. This is less than that. So this equation does have a solution, which means that Clark can buy apples and bananas and no cantaloupes and get his $5. Is that sufficient? Well, I don't know. Does Clark like apples? Does he like bananas? I don't know right now whether he likes apples and bananas. I know that he can do this with only apples and bananas. 
but I don't know if he likes only apples and bananas. So this statement is insufficient. It doesn't tell me whether he likes the fruit that he buys. It just tells me he can buy apples and bananas. And therefore, the answer is the one that nobody picked. Nobody picked A. Not one person in my poll. Now, I bet if I look at it again, people have changed to A. Uh, no, still doesn't have, no, nobody has picked A. I, I appreciate your honesty, not all quickly switching to A while I'm not looking. Like, I'm going to look at the poll again and it's like 100 A's and nothing else. But no, it's A. Oops, it's off the bottom of the screen, but it is A. All right? Does it make sense? <laughs> Does it make sense why the answer is A, guys? Oh, you picked A in the chat. Right. Yes, you did, Ravi. Congratulations. I'm sorry. I, I do want people to use the polls, please. So, does it make sense why A was the correct answer to this question? By the way, I'm sure you're all wondering, hey, Clark, how do you like them apples? And the answer is, it doesn't matter. Okay. Anyone catch that reference? <laughs> what kind of question is this? It's a Diophantine equation data sufficiency problem and a hard one. Now, if you wanted to know how many solutions a Diophantine equation has, I could give you a fancy formula, and I'll show you the fancy formula, but, uh, well, no, no, there's never no solution, Nikhil. It's, it's possible to sell apples and bananas, or to buy apples and bananas. It's not possible to buy just apples and cantaloupes. So he must have bought some bananas, which statement one tells me he did not like. So he bought some fruit he didn't like in statement one, but I don't know about statement two. Now, if you wanted to know how many solutions, I've got this fancy formula. It's n times a, b less than c, less than or equal to n plus one times a, b. What the hell is that? Let me translate it into very simple terms for you. I've already told you that if the product of the two constants, a and b, is less than c, then there must be at least one solution. But the real question is, how many times a and b can you fit in under c? And the more times you can multiply a, b, and fit it in under c, the more solutions you have, okay? So if a times b is less than c, you must have a solution. But if 2ab is less than c, you must have at least two solutions. And if 3ab is less than c, you must have at least three solutions. You want to know how many solutions there are to your equation ax plus by equals c, which is reduced and doesn't have you know, common factor for a and b. You want to know how many solutions? Multiply these things and then divide it into c. If you look at c over ab, that will tell you how many solutions there are. If c over ab is between one and two, there's either one or two solutions. If c over ab is between two and three, there's a between two and three solutions, either two or three, and so forth. So that's a quick way to check, exactly, it's a quick way to check how many solutions you've got. You just take C over AB, and you just see where it falls, and that kind of just tells you how many solutions there are. But I suppose the next question is, okay, so I've found one. I know there's solutions, I found a solution. How do I generate all of the solutions? Some of you have been asking this question already, right, in the chat. Some of you have been going, okay, but, 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 how do I find the actual multiple solutions here in an efficient way? And so far, we haven't really asked you to, right? We've asked you to figure out if there is a solution. We've asked you to count the solutions. We haven't asked you to actually tell me what they are. Okay. Well, I, actually, I haven't even really asked you to count them. I've just basically tried to figure out if there is one, right? All first three problems really came down to, does a solution exist? Let's look at something different. And we'll do this one together as well. This is an official guide question. There's a mix here of Veritas questions and official guide questions. Uh, all but the very last one are already on GMAT Club. The last one I'm not sure we'll get to in the class, but it's just a bonus for you guys if you uh, download the, uh, the slides, which are available or will be available in a, in a link attached to this video. You'll be able to download these slides and go through them at your leisure. So let's talk about this question together. Certain fruit stands sold apples for 70 cents and bananas for 50 cents. Customer purchased both apples and bananas for a total of 630. I want to know how many apples and bananas. I hope at this point you're very comfortable writing down the linear Diophantine equation for this. And uh, it would be, whoops, sorry, forgetting the poll. That's still the previous poll. Um, 
70A plus 50B equals 630, right? Does everyone agree that that would be the equation that I'd be looking for? Also, I'm going to go ahead and clear that previous poll now, if my, com my phone will let me. Come on. Clear responses. Clear responses. Okay. All right. Poll is cleared, but we'll save it for the next problem. Okay, so anyway, does everyone agree with that equation? And with, of course, reducing it by a factor of 10? 7a plus 5b equals 63. Can I explain this equation again? 70 cents for apples. So 70 times A would be how much you spend on apples. 50 cents for bananas. So 50B would be what you spend on bananas. All right, Nikhil? And when you spend all that money, and I'm doing this in cents because I don't want decimals, right? The point is not to have decimals. Okay, 630. Okay, so then I can reduce it. I can reduce it by a factor of 10. And I know there's a solution, right? I know there's at least one solution because 7 times 5 is 35, and that's less than 63. In fact, it's more than, it's less than 63, but 2 times 35 is 70, which is more than 63. So I can say right now there's either one or two solutions to this equation across positive integers, either one or two. But I don't know which, and I don't know what they are. The trick to finding them is, first of all, Grab an easy solution, an easy solution. And they're always going to give you one, okay? They will tell you a solution just very, very directly, um, either in a data sufficiency manner by putting it in the other statement, or simply by giving you some really obvious numbers. Notice that 63 is a multiple of 7, right? And of course, that's a multiple of 7. So why don't I just not buy bananas? If I didn't buy bananas, how many apples would I buy? How many apples would I buy along with no bananas? Yes, antimony is exactly right and exactly right about being not legitimate. But that is still where you start. Okay? It's fairly simple to say, okay, I bought nine apples and no bananas. But, of course, the question says, I picked, uh, purchased both apples and bananas, so this solution is not a valid one. Still, this solution is my starting point, right? 9 comma 0 is my starting point to get my final solution. To find the other solutions, we use something I call the exchange rate idea. And this is one of the most important ideas of Diophantine equations, so make sure you understand it. The exchange rate idea says, if I bought 9 apples and no bananas, but then I had some regrets. And I went, ah, oh, man, you know, wish I had some bananas. Can I come back to you, uh, you fruit stand, and um, can I trade you back some of these apples, get some bananas, you know? I just return some apples for some bananas, right? Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. We're getting there, guys. Very good, Karna. Very good, Ash Ashank. You're way ahead of me, all right? But if I wanted to trade some apples from bananas for bananas, I would have to do so at a value that I can get for both apples and bananas, right? I can't just trade one apple, because they'd look at me funny and be like, what, you, you want one and two-sevenths bananas? I, what, or one and two-fifths bananas? Like, I'm confused. Like, how do I give you, I'm not giving you a fractional banana. That's not happening. I can't just trade in one apple. I can't just trade in two apples, because it's not, yes, 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 I'm getting there because it's not a multiple of 5. I need to trade in a number of apples that's a multiple of 5 to get a number of bananas that's a multiple of 7. In other words, if I wanted to trade in apples, I could trade in 5 of them. 5 apples and get 7 bananas, right? Do you agree that 5 apples equals 7 bananas as far as value is concerned? I'd be indifferent between those. They're each 35, uh, they're each 350, right? 5 apples, 7 bananas, 350 either way. Sorry, I'm standing in front of the banana price. But that means that what I can do is I can subtract 5 from my number of apples and add 7 to my number of bananas and get another solution. In fact, as many times as I want, I can do that. And if I do that one time, 
I go down from nine apples to four. I come up from no bananas to seven. And I get this other solution, four comma seven, right? And that means I have 11 pieces of fruit. And that's how you do that question from the official guide. You find a solution, one that's very straightforward, one that is quote unquote easy because it's just, hey, 63 is a multiple of seven. And once you find a solution, you use this exchange rate idea to produce all the other solutions. Again, I can write a fancy equation, and the fancy equation looks like this. But if I just showed you this fancy equation, it might be a little overwhelming. I would say I don't care as much about memorizing the fancy equation. What I'd really like is for you to understand it. I'd like you to look at this and go, well, I get it. I'm just subtracting the other coefficient because I'm just trading some apples for some bananas every time. I'm returning some of these. I'm buying some of those. That's all that's really happening here. But an equal value. Does this make sense? Do you follow this? Certainly I know a few of you do. What about everybody? Talk to me, people. If you're watching this video right now, I want to hear from you. Yes, 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 yes. Four yeses. 35 watchers. Still not a great percent of you guys. All right. Great. Good. Okay. So then now it's your turn again. I walked you through one, and now I'm going to give you uh, one to figure out yourself. I'm going to give you two minutes, and again... Just hit the two minute mark. So let's see how the answers are looking. Oh, all right, we got seven people voting. Again, I'd love for more of you to participate. I really believe in that. So if you're watching, jump in, get in the poll, pick an answer. Let's see what you got, okay? So uh, it's okay to be wrong. Just take your best step. We'll uh, stab, you'll learn from it. And uh, I think that's worthwhile. Okay, but let's see the results here. Not bad, actually. This question is super hard. It's 95th percentile hard on GMAT Club, okay? Uh, I checked all of these beforehand just to see how the GMAT Club audience is doing, and this one's pretty killer. And uh, almost half of you guys uh, got this right. 
So, how do I do it? Well, I start by writing down my linear Diophantine equation, which again, I hope we're getting comfortable with now, and you've noticed that I always put this into integers because I don't want decimals or it wouldn't work. Uh, 19 cents for Jack, 25 cents for Marble. I'm gonna drop a thousand pennies on this store. I'm gonna make it rain pennies, okay? Be, uh, be awesome, there'll be Lincolns everywhere. I mean, dude, okay, so. Uh, the first thing to do, as I've already made clear, is to find any one solution. And there should be an easy solution. We know a solution exists. In fact, we actually kind of know how many. It's got to be at least two, since two times this is less than a thousand, but at most three, since three times this product is more than a thousand. But now an easy solution, antimony's got it, would be, ac yeah, exactly. 0 comma 40. I did it in the order that it was written and it would be 0 comma 40. Uh, Shishwat has clearly figured this out. Good for you, good for you. Uh, but if I just wanted to buy marbles, I could do that, right? And it doesn't say anything about it, it has to be a positive number, I have to buy some of each or anything like that. So 0 40 is a legit solution here, right? Did everyone get 0 40? Or do you understand it now? either got it before or get it now, 0, 40. Got it now? Oh, comma, got it. Anyone else, thoughts? Got it, okay. So now, how do I get from this to the other? Gain 25 jacks, lose 19 marbles. Just make an exchange, you know? It's worth the same amount. It's worth $4.75, 19 jacks or 25 marbles. If I have said, ah, you know, I want to return uh, 19 of these marbles and, uh, or sorry, 19 of these, yeah, marbles and gain 25, you know, get 25 jacks instead, sure, they'd say, that's fine. It's all the same to us. So then if I do that, I gain 25 jacks, lose, 25, um, lose 19 marbles, there's another solution. And if I wanted, I could do it again. There's another solution. But I can't do it anymore because I can't lose another 19 marbles. I don't have 19 marbles to lose. So that's it. Those are the solutions. 0, 40, 25, 21, 50, comma, 2. I don't need to sit there and grind out and plug, chug. I see all these solutions in the forums when people talk about this question. Uh, even some among tutors that are real grindy that are like, oh, well, you know, I could, uh, I could try multiples of 25 for J by hand and I'd find this one and this one, this one, and I do all this calculation and I'm multiplying shit by 19 and pardon my French and, and it's just like, dude, no, come on, man. 30 seconds, make your life easy. 0, 40, obvious solution. Add 25, subtract 19. 25, 21. Add 25, subtract 19. 52. Add 25, so, nope, just kidding. Can't do it again. Uh, great, you used to lose your marbles. Now you've got them, right? You're keeping your marbles. Okay, that's it. Three solutions, Bing bingo, okay? I'm, the goal here is to not just get the answer because you grind it out, the goal is to get comfortable with this approach and turn even 95th percentile hard questions into something that you're like, oh man, come on, come on, give me something challenging. This isn't even anything, right? This is 30 seconds. What is this crap? This is nothing, you know? Uh, and it's okay if you're not there yet, but I've got a couple more opportunities for you to get there. And so this next one is from the official guide, also on GMAT Club, a 95th percentile hard question. But again, something I hope you just dominate really fast. So I'm going to walk off for two minutes. I hope it doesn't even take you that long. Throw an answer in the poll, okay? Great. I'm going to clear the... Okay, poll is clear. Go ahead.
All right, we just hit two minutes. Answers in last chance. I'm going to show the poll in a second. Let me just check the results. Damn, you guys are good. Wow, come back already. Ha ha, says Antimony. This is wasting my time. This is too easy for us now. You guys rock. Okay. Like everyone picked A here. On, again, 700 level question, you don't believe me, go check this in GMAT Club. You can see the stats on it. It's not a friendly question, right? Uh, but it is for us. We know what we're doing with these things now, don't we? So let's write down the equations. Fairly simple. 15x plus 29y equals some constant. I, I don't know what the constant is. I don't know how much money she spent. Now, statement one tells me the constant is 440. Statement two tells me she bought an equal number of stamps of each kind. I'm going to start by pointing out that statement two is definitely not sufficient, right? Uh, she bought an equal number of 15 and 29 cent stamps. I don't know how much she spent. That's a great question, Kana, and the answer is simple. Joanna bought an integer number of stamps of each kind. In fact, she bought a non-negative number of integer number of stamps of each kind. So the difference, what is a Diophantine equation? A Diophantine equation is an integer valued equation or system of equations. That phrase, integer valued, is the key distinction. All right? So in all of these problems, there's been something. You know, we're selling an integer number of lemonades. We're buying an integer number of marbles. We're buying an integer number of stamps. When you see these word problems, what they're really telling you is, hey, these guys are integers. Uh, Nikesh, let's, uh, let's hold those sorts of questions uh, to the end, please. Uh, but yeah, that's how I know, okay? And I'm going to do a little longer. I'm going to go just a little past an hour if that's okay with you guys. Is that all right? Because uh, I can stop here after I go over this question, but I have maybe one more I'd love to throw in if you don't mind seeing it, okay? You cool with doing one more after this? I always run a little long. I always have one more question. I just love doing questions. So, okay. All right. So statement two, not sufficient. I mean, she sold an equal number of each kind of stamp, but I don't know what equal number. I don't know how many of each kind. I don't know how much money she spent, right? Okay. So statement two, I mean, who knows? Also, the two statements together, <laughs> uh, the two statements together, certainly sufficient because I mean if I put the two statements together I have again two equations and two variables I can substitute and I can just get one equation one variable 15x plus 29x equals 440 so of course x equals 10 y equals 10 it's easy to solve these together and that's actually the key right the key is they gave us the easy solution they're always going to there's going to be an easy solution if they really need you to calculate the actual solutions and they did by the way because 15 times 29 is 435, it's less than 440. So it was possible, it was possible there were actually gonna be two solutions here. But I needed to know, could there be two solutions? Well, one solution is 1010. How would I get another solution? I would exchange 29 15 cent stamps for 15 29 cent stamps, or vice versa. But can I make that exchange? Could I trade 15 of these for 29 of those? Or, you know, or sorry, 15 of these for 29 of those? Or 29 of these for 15 of those? Could I make that exchange? Well, I, I can't. I don't have it, right? I don't have enough stamps, right? I don't have 29 of these. I can't trade 29 of these for anything. I don't have 29 of them. I can't trade 15 of those for anything. I don't have 15 of them. So if I got 10 and 10, I'm stuck. That's it, that's the only thing I can have. There's no exchanges possible. So that solution isn't just a solution, it's the solution. And that's why A is correct. And that's how I would do it. You start there, you look at both statements, you say, well, it's definitely 10, 10 is a solution. No, nope, can't make any exchanges, it's the only one, answer is A. Now the LCM isn't actually the problem here. If you take the LCM, Uh, sorry, 15 and 29. If you check that, it's actually 435. It's actually less than 440. So that would tell me that there could have been, theoretically, two solutions, right? This would tell me one or two solutions. Right, Shashwat? 
one or two, didn't know which, had to actually look at the solution to tell, right? That's what makes this problem harder than Julie's Lemonade Stand. Julie's Lemonade Stand could only ever have one solution. This theoretically could have had two, but in practice there's no way to get the second solution. What do you say, Shashwat? Do you, do you follow? Agreed? Okay, all right. But we did check, and of course we can't get another, right? 10, 10 is it. One more, we'll do this one, and that'll leave even one bonus problem in the slides for anyone who downloads the slides, okay? There's gonna be one more problem in the slides when you uh, take a look at them later that you can go over on your own time and really make sure that you've got this. I'll add another twist. But this will be our last problem. I'm gonna clear the poll, reopen it, give you two minutes, we'll do it, we'll talk about it, and we will pack up. All right, good luck. Two minutes. All right, we just hit the two minute mark. Some of y'all may have gotten caught because of the slight difference in this question from the previous one. You did need to read carefully. Uh, now is the time to put your answers in the poll, please. I got a bunch of people in the chat, but anyone else wanna pull it up in the, you know, poll? No one? Apparently not. Okay, no one wants to answer in the poll, no one wants to get it right, nothing. Okay, sorry, uh, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. This question is really hard, but one thing that we should notice right away, they said X and Y are integers. What didn't they say? Oh, it's the same poll link, I'm sorry. Uh, GMAT Club didn't repeat it, it's still, um, it's still the same poll link, you just have to scroll up for it, I apologize. Uh, my bad, I don't know what, GMAT Club, where'd you go? GMAT Club. Uh, the, the, the GMAT Club observer. Uh, I, yeah, okay. Whatever. That's all right. It's okay. I see people are answering in the chat anyway. What didn't they say here? Okay? Let's talk about that. What didn't they say here that you had in some of the other problems? Okay, no one's telling me. Let's go through the solution. Oh, mm, mm, they didn't say positive. They didn't say positive integer. They just said integer, 
right? They said x and y are integers. And of course, you notice they squared this, right? This is x plus y squared. Why would they do that? Why would they square it? Again, maybe they're hiding a negative, right? Interesting. Let's find a solution. Did you guys at least find one solution? I think you did. I think, in fact, here's the results on the poll, by the way. I think, in fact, the solution you found is this one. Since 2x is even, 57 is odd, 9y must be odd. I picked an odd multiple of 9 below 57. I picked 9 times 5 is 45, and that gives x equals 6, at which point 6, 5 is solution, 121. Is this what you guys got? Did you guys get that 6, 5 solution? So I had a whole bunch of Ds. I assume all you D people, you went right there and you said, well, I can't get any other solutions, right? Because I can't decrease x by 9. I could increase x by 9, decrease y by 2, but that goes the wrong direction. That makes me bigger. But of course I can decrease x by 9. They didn't say positive. So how do I generate the other solutions? Exactly like I said. Decrease x by 9 increase y by 2. Do you agree that I could do that? Do you agree that I could decrease x by 9, increase y by 2, and get this solution? Yeah, but antimony, that's not the way I showed you to do it, and there's a reason I showed you the way I did. Your way got you a wrong answer. Do you agree that I could get this solution, guys? And this solution is better than the original. Negative 3, comma 7. No one said it can't be negative, and I can use the exchange rate idea to get negative 3, comma 7, right? That was the key difference. They didn't say negative. They didn't say positive. They just said integers. But wait. We can do better. We can still do better. Do you know why we can do better? Because we can do it again. What happens if I do it again, guys? Negative 12, comma 9. Subtract another 9 from the x, add another 2 to the y. Are you sure? Are you sure, Ravi? No, no, you're subtracting, two, you're subtracting 9 from the x, you're adding 2 to the y. A call, subtract 9 from x each time, add 2 to the y, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> gun, gun, signs matter. Negative 12 comma 9 does not have a larger square value, Ravi and Gangan. It's 9 when you square it. Negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. You square it, you get positive 9. This is better. Right? Isn't this better? Ravi? Ravi, Gangan, Antimony, yep, 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 nine. Now you say, well, yeah, okay, can I do it again? I don't know, maybe I can even keep getting better. Well, no, you can't. This is the best. You're not doing any better than this. Why? Because if you go to the next one, you get negative 21 comma 11, it's back up to 100. And as you continue, you're going to keep going away. Right? You're going to keep going away again because you're going to have negative 30, comma 13. It's going to be farther. There are infinite solutions, Kanha. That's right. There are infinitely many solutions we can generate. But you're never doing better than this. Among all the infinite solutions, this is the very best one. B was the right answer, and nobody got it right.
What do you think? Uh, you said no 20, negative 21 comma 11. I'm not sure, Sheshwa, what your response was, but negative 21 comma 11 is a solution, but it's a worse one. It's a worse one. Right. Okay, yeah, learn from your mistakes. No judgment on the mistakes. All I really care about is you learn from it. You're right. There's, Sheshwa, you're absolutely right. Um, I think Kanha was asking if there were infinite solutions in general. Kanha is right to say there are infinite solutions in general to the equation, but there's only one least value, and this is the least value. And uh, that's it. That was the approach. How to approach? Gangan, did you, uh, did you see how to approach it here? We take one solution, and we keep increasing x by 9 and decreasing y by 2, or decreasing x by 9 and increasing y by 2. We just keep doing it, right? Uh, yeah, I know. Nothing else is the least, right? But this one is. This is the least possible solution right here. 12 comma 9 gives the best result we can hope for. And that was the right answer. Okay, does anyone have any other questions or comments? I'm going to skip the next problem. You can certainly go back to it yourself. Certainly a fun problem. Whoops, went too far. Hang on. I wanted to show my wrap-up slide, and I just totally went too far. Oh, man. Now i got to press this like 90 times. Come on. That was bad. Almost 60, 70. Summary. Ha. Huh. OK. So look. Diophantine equations mainly show up at the 650 plus level. Um, how to find which value to select, Gangan? It was just a matter of looking at a few of them and finding out which one was going to minimize. You know, you started out at 6 comma 5. The sum of the, uh, the square of the sum is 11. Then we tried negative 3 comma 7, and I did better. I got a you know, square of 4. But that's still not the best, because then I had negative 12 comma 9, and I'm taking the square of negative 3, and that's even better. But then I keep going, and I check one more, and I go negative 21 comma 11. Oh, that's worse again. It's 100, you know? And I can just see that if I keep going, it's going to keep getting worse. Negative 30 comma 13, I mean, that's going to be 17 squared 289. It's way worse, and the next one's worse than that, you know? The, the total value of x and y changed by 7 each time. And so, you know, the total value needed to be close to zero, right? And the two closest to zero total values were positive 4, which is what gave a lot of people 16, and negative 3, which gave us the right answer, positive 9. So then anything else you go, you go to negative 10, negative 17, negative 24, it's going to just get worse. Go the other direction, positive 11, positive 18, positive 25, it's going to get worse. That's how you find the best solution. One more example of this, support, um, of this sort, where we can reduce x by 9 and y by 2. Nanda and I, I think I kind of just did that. The exchange rate, again, you take one solution and you reduce x by this. And you increase y by that. You take each variable and you increase, decrease by the other coefficient. Right? And, and in doing so, you're able to generate other solutions. Uh, so Gangan, Nandan, and Subash, I, I hope I've answered your questions. Uh, if I haven't, please ask a follow-up now. Uh, Kanha, again, I, I tried to answer this question for you earlier. How do I differentiate a diophantin from a general equation? The integer answer is integer values. The answer is these are integer valued equations or systems of equations, right? Julie's lemonade stand, Julie sold an integer number of lemonades. You're going to take an integer number of yak and or zebra rides. You're going to buy an integer number of jacks and or marbles, an integer number of stamps. The last question we did just literally told you x and y are integers. They're integer valued equations. And it's often in a word problem form that they'll do this because they're using the word problem to hide the fact that these are integers. So if you see something like this, and it says, hey, these have to be integers, either explicitly or through the word problem it created. And it's giving you this sort of equation, system of equation thing.
thing. That's when you start going, hmm, this looks like that stuff. It looks like a Diophantine equation. It's an integer valued equation. It maybe it fits the form ax plus by equals c, at which point you start to go into this process. You start to say, okay, how many solutions are there? How do I find them? I need to reduce it. And then once I found one, how do I get the others? And then the exchange rate idea that I described. And again, the exchange rate idea, you know, I guess in that last question, Gan Gan, there was a little bit of trial and error, but it all started from finding one solution and then increasing the value of y by the coefficient of x and decreasing the value of x by the coefficient of y. And that's what makes it work. All right? So I've got to wrap up here. If you have any additional questions, um, we can put them in the chat and we can discuss it a little bit more. Uh, again, I really, really hope you will like the video or hell, dislike it if you really thought it was worthy of that. Uh, but let us know what you think. It helps us do better the next time. And uh, if you liked it and you want more like this, please subscribe to the channel. All right? Thanks so much, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good night, everybody.